Stealth in the aviation defense industry is becoming a standard in ongoing projects and future equipment, and this could become a determining factor in conflicts to come. But what is being done to reduce the effectiveness of stealth? How to detect stealth planes like the F-22 and F-35? This is what we will see today, so I ask you to stay with the video and watch until the end. To begin, I just need to clarify what stealth actually is. Contrary to what many think, stealth does not make any object invisible to radar, but only reduces the detection range in order to guarantee some tactical advantage. To be able to reduce this detection range in order to make an object stealthy, two techniques are used. The first and main one are shape techniques, and the second is absorbent materials. To understand how these two techniques work, we first need to understand how a radar works. A radar basically emits and receives electromagnetic signals. These signals are sent in one direction, and when they touch an object, they return to the radar which then calculates the distance by the time it took the signal to travel and return. For a plane to be stealthy, it needs to reduce this return of signals, the so-called echo, and this is the function of shape techniques and absorbent materials. Shaping techniques basically consist of avoiding 90 degree angles, keeping all possible edges and surfaces at a tilted angle. This means that the signals emitted by the radar, when they reach these inclined surfaces, are directed in other directions and not back to the emitting radar, greatly reducing the echo. It's as if the radio signals were a projectile ricocheting and going in another direction. Absorbent materials, as the name suggests, absorb part of the waves emitted by the radar, preventing these waves from returning and this further reduces the echo, that is, the reflection caused by the object. However, shape techniques represent approximately 90% of the reduction in the RCS of an object, while absorbent materials represent only approximately 10% of the reduction achieved. The RCS means how much an object reflects to the radar, and this value can be measured in square meters. Therefore, a plane with an RCS of 10 square meters will be much easier to detect than a plane with an RCS of just 1 square meter. And the first way to detect stealth planes is precisely with radar, more specifically low-frequency radars. Now that everyone understands how stealth works and how a radar works, it is necessary to clarify another point. Radars can be divided into operating bands or frequencies. Each band or frequency represents the width of the signal beam emitted by the radar. As it is not possible to achieve the same level of stealth in all bands and radar operating frequencies, stealth aircraft were designed to be more stealthy in the X, Q, and C bands, which form signal beams with a width between 1.6 and 7.5 cm. These beams are easily deflected or absorbed by shape techniques and absorbent materials. Preference was given to stealth at these frequencies because they are the most precise, and are used to guide anti-aircraft missiles. Low-frequency radars, which operate in the L, UHF and VHF bands, form beams that can range from 15 cm to 10 m wide, and are much less affected by shape techniques and also more difficult to absorb, making radars that work on these frequencies have a greater echo from a stealth plane. The problem with these radars is that they have little precision and are not used, or at least until recently they were not used, to guide missiles, but this is starting to change. New technologies and high-powered computers are improving the accuracy of these radars, and they are already in part used to guide missiles. The Israeli anti-aircraft system Spider SR, for example, uses a search radar that operates in the L-band, and serves to guarantee the mid-course update of the missiles that in the final phase lock on the target with their own internal sensors. This is also the case with the U.S. Navy's E-2D Hawkeye Airborne Early Warning Aircraft, which use a VHF band radar and can already guarantee a mid-course upgrade for the SM-6 long-range missiles. Current technology is not yet capable of miniaturizing VHF and UHF radars to the point that they can fit in the nose of a fighter, but the Russians have already made an L-band radar capable of being installed on the wings of their Sukhois to give early warning against stealth planes. 
These L-band, UHF and VHF radars, especially the latter two, depending on the emission power, can detect stealth planes from tens or even hundreds of kilometers away. The second way to detect stealth planes is by thermal signature. It is also necessary to make an addendum here. Stealth planes do not only focus on reducing the radar signature, but also the thermal signature, and this is done especially with special nozzles for the engines. However, the thermal signature reduction is still much smaller and less significant than the radar signature, so infrared tracking systems are still useful against stealth aircraft. Basically, every plane, whether stealthy or not, depends on burning fuel to generate enough energy to fly, and this consequently generates heat. An aeronautical turbine, depending on the operating power, can easily reach more than 1000 degrees Celsius inside, and part of this ends up being transferred to the surrounding fuselage and to the exhaust plume. This generates a great contrast, that is, the difference between the temperature of the plane and the background, especially due to what is called thermal gradient. The thermal gradient determines the temperature gain or loss depending on altitude. Basically, the temperature of a given location will decrease by 0.65 degrees Celsius for every 100 meters of altitude gain, or 6.5 degrees for every 1000 meters of altitude. At an altitude of 10,000 meters, the air temperature will be about 65 degrees lower than the temperature at the same point on the Earth's surface. This means that at this altitude the temperature will most likely be negative and will generate a great contrast with the high temperature of a combat aircraft. It is this difference that will be captured by infrared tracking systems. Modern infrared tracking systems work in the long-wave infrared region. This type of system is sensitive enough to detect the heat generated by the friction of a plane's fuselage with the air, even at subsonic speeds. If this plane is at supersonic speed, therefore generating more heat, it will be detected considerably further away, and if it is moving away, that is, with the engine nozzle facing towards the tracking system, the detection distance can even double, as the thermal signature of the engine is much higher. The distance then that a plane can be detected by an infrared tracking system varies greatly depending on speed, altitude, and direction. These systems are also greatly affected by weather conditions, which reduce the maximum range, but this is less relevant in the case of systems installed on aircraft such as the Gripen or Typhoon, which must fly above the altitude of most clouds and will most of the time have a clear sky ahead. The range of these systems is well guarded, but the pirate tracking system, on the Typhoon fighter, considered one of the most advanced in the world, is said to be capable of detecting planes, whether stealthy or not, between 50 and 150 kilometers away, depending on speed, altitude, direction and weather conditions. Another negative point of this system, at least the long-range ones, is the difficulty in determining the distance of detected objects. At distances of up to 30 kilometers, laser rangefinders can be used for measurement, but they do not go much further than that. At greater distances, it is necessary to perform a triangulation between two or more planes detecting the same object, or a kinetic maneuver that measures the distance as a function of the angular change. On the other hand, these systems are completely passive, that is, they do not alert the enemy that they are being tracked, and they are also immune to electronic interference. The third way to detect stealth planes is with passive radars. Passive radars should not be confused with ESM systems, which we will look at next. A passive radar, unlike a traditional radar, does not emit radio signals, but only receives signals from other sources, especially civilian sources. Our cities are full of TV, radio and telephone antennas emitting signals continuously in all directions. These signals, although not used to measure distances as in the case of radars, still behave like the waves emitted by radars and reflect off flying objects. Passive radars detect these waves in two ways. First those that come directly from the emission sources, such as telephone antennas, for example, and then the waves emitted by the same sources, but which reach the radar after reflecting off an object. 
The time difference between the arrival of each one will allow us to calculate the distance, speed and altitude of that object. We have already seen here that stealth comes mainly from shape techniques, that is, those designed to divert the waves emitted by radars to other directions and not back to the emitting radar. As passive radars benefit precisely from the waves reflected by an object in other directions, they are potentially capable of detecting stealth planes at much greater distances than traditional radars. And the fourth way to detect stealth planes is with ESM systems. An ESM system is basically an RWR, that is, a radio wave receiver, which has a large signal library used to recognize received signals. They can be installed on fighters, signals intelligence aircraft, ships, and on land as well. These sensors detect signals emitted from a radar, for example, and indicate the direction from which this emission comes, but without determining the distance, as it is a passive system. However, if two or more receivers like this, separated by a certain distance, detect signals from the same source, they can determine the distance through triangulation. This is how, for example, the Vera NG system in the Czech Republic works. This system is made up of several receiving antennas that are spread across the land. These antennas can detect and identify signals in a frequency range ranging from 50 MHz to 18 GHz, that is, the operating ranges of radars, data links, navigation systems, among others. This means that any plane, whether stealthy or not, can be detected and tracked if it is using its radar or communication systems. Since this system does not depend on the plane's radar signature, but only on the signals emitted by them, it can detect stealth planes at distances as great as non-stealth planes, which can be as far as 400 kilometers, if the tracked plane uses its radar or communications or navigation systems for long enough. Because they are passive, that is, because they don't issue any type of signal, ESM systems and passive radars do not alert the enemy of their presence, and are also immune to anti-radiation missiles. All of these technologies seen here have their weaknesses but they are evolving, and if used together, they could, in the not-so-distant future, greatly reduce the efficiency of stealth planes. Thank you for watching the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, and see you next time.